Are you tired of working your nine to five or maybe trying to grow your small business? Are you really after financial freedom? But it seems like there's so many different ways out there for you to actually create financial freedom that it makes your head spin. I wanna simplify that for you today. Today's video is about creating financial freedom through real estate investing, strategies for success. My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design and if you follow this channel, you know that we're all about creating financial freedom and I have sent and created a lot of interviews with real estate professionals who have financial freedom and they use that through the power of real estate. Now, I know what you're thinking, there's a lot of opportunities. You could do it through cryptocurrency, which you can. You could do it through Amazon, which you can. There's so many ways out there, but what stands the test of time is real estate. Real estate has made more multi-millionaires than any other industry out there. And so today's video is solely focused on that. So let's share, there's really only two strategies that you can do to create financial freedom through real estate investing. So the first one is being a passive investor. Now, what does that even mean? What that actually means is you can invest your money with someone else and allow them to do all the work for you and you get a return in, in return for that. And so what's great about it is usually, and I'll talk about this here in a minute, usually you actually get paid first, which is really cool if the investors that are using your money are actually very intelligent and they wanna have you keep investing with them for the long run. Okay, so as a passive investor, one of the things you could do is participate in what's called a syndication. It's usually a 506C where you have to be an accredited investor. Now to be an accredited investor, there's three things that need to happen. And so you either have to have a net worth over a million dollars where it's outside of your primary home. So your primary home, if you have equity, doesn't count towards that. You have to have, I believe, over a quarter million dollars or $300,000 as a couple per year for two consecutive years of income. And the third one's just drawn a blank. I think it's like as a single person, you need to have 200,000, maybe 250. Um, we'll post it on the screen here for you to be exact. But those are the requirements to be able to be an accredited investor. Here's a quick little tip for those of you that are on the borderline of that. If you've made over the $300,000 for the first year and you're in year two and you've crossed over that 300K mark, what you can do is you can go to certain websites out there that will allow you to say, okay, you're an accredited investor, and then you bring that piece of paper to your CPA, they verify it, sign off, and now you, and it's uploaded, and now you are an accredited investor with under two years. So that's a sneak around. I've done that in the past, so that really helps. So you wanna participate in a syndication where they bring all these accreditor, accredited investors in, and it allows you to participate participate in a bigger project. There's two types of groups. There's the general partners who find a deal, analyze the deal, you know, submit the offer. They do all the work on it. They manage it for you. They do everything. Then there's the limited partners, which as a passive investor, you could be a limited partner. What that means is you bring in your money, usually it's anywhere from 50 to 100 grand minimum. Um, I've seen some people accept 25 grand, but usually it's about 100K, sometimes 50. And so you can invest that money and you don't have to do anything. For the next three, five, seven, or 10 years, however long they designate how they're going, what their extra strategy is, your money's in there. It's going to work for you. Now, if you're actually in a syndication like an apartment complex, they will return cash flow once the, um, once the asset is stabilized or once they renovate it and then stabilize it, you'll start getting monthly cash flow or usually quarterly cash flow. You can start making money that way. Then when they sell it, which you're doing nothing, you're just collecting mailbox money. Then when they go to sell that bad boy, you usually get a multiple anywhere from two to three on average is kind of the multiple when you uh, exit the asset. So you can be a limited partner, which is a passive investor to create financial freedom. I know people, they work their job, they're doctors, they're small business owners, they make hundreds of thousands of dollars and keep putting them into syndications every single year. And what happens is they're building up their cash flow, and then when it sells, maybe they put 100K in, they're gonna get two or $300,000 back 
plus all that cash flow and then they reinvest that and over the next few years or decades they've created financial freedom is it possible to do it do it faster you bet it just depends on what project or asset you're investing in and how the general partners handle that you don't really have any say but it is a great way to create financial freedom next as a passive investor you could be a hard money lender which means you have money and you can lend it to someone who needs it for a project usually you always want to get a contract with that and if you can you want to be in first position as a lien on that project or that asset this way you're not competing against a bank who wants their money first if the project fails you want to make sure you can take over that asset and be able to um, have do whatever you want with this position however that is sell it off or reinvest more money and make it up to speed whatever that may be um, hopefully it never gets to that point but as a hard money lender you can lend your money to other people and then when the project's over after three six months nine months or a year usually hard money's shorter time frame and the reason that is is because you charge a lot of interest on your money so let me give you an example if you're a hard money lender and you lend out a hundred thousand dollars let's just say it's for four months someone's flipping a project that doesn't need a ton of work but they can get it done in three or four months and then they can refinance or sell it and the exits quick you can charge anywhere for 10 to 15 percent on your money so imagine you lend a hundred grand we'll just say you use 15% and you got $15,000 back at the end of four months. You did that three times, you just made $45,000 for the year just on that $100,000. Tell me, that is not totally passive and freaking awesome. Now, does that come with a lot of risk? You bet it does, right? Because if the project fails, you know, you gotta be able to do your due diligence before you invest the money. Check out the property or properties, how much rehab is, what's the uh, after repair value, the ARV. You wanna know those things if you're playing as a hard money investor. Now, I remember when I worked a job, there was a guy that I worked with every paycheck every two weeks we got paid right and he was always like behind on his bills he always needed money before we got paid so what we would do is i would lend him a thousand dollars and for back then it was a lot for me and that took a lot of risk but i gave him a thousand dollars i asked for 10 percent return and i'd get 1100 back when we got paid so it worked out phenomenal. I played as a hard money lender on a lower level. I expect to play on a much higher level for in years to come. But if you have money just laying around not doing anything, there are a lot of great investors out there that are really good with other people's money and will pay you a nice return. And then lastly, as a passive investor, you can be a silent partner, right? Let's just say we're both, we go into business together. I say, I got this great property. It's gonna take me three months to flip. You could just go ahead and give me a hundred grand and I'm not gonna give you 10% on your money I'm gonna give you 20% equity in it or 40% equity in it right and when we go to sell you get your equity portion of the profit it's really that simple now if you're if you know people like that and they're willing to give you equity and you're just kind of like the silent partner handing over the money then phenomenal that's awesome but again you gotta look at the risk that you're taking on and mitigate that risk as much as possible so the first way is passive and we just gave you three ways to be a passive investor that i find that are really good some take more risks some don't but it's a really good way to create financial freedom quickly now some of you might be like joe i don't have that money to be a hard money lender that's okay i'm going to talk to you about this second way which is active investing where you can produce that money really quickly and then become a passive investor it's really up to you most people we have different goals we have different outcomes you got to be clear on what yours are and if you're going to play in real estate you got to understand what's your swim lane where do you want to play and how do you want to invest in real estate moving forward because there's so many different ways i heard on stage once there was a gentleman that was speaking right before me at an event out here in the boise idaho area a phenomenal speaker and one of the things he said as he stood up and started his speech was he said there's a million different ways to make a million dollars in real estate and i was like man that's so good and so true so let's talk about active investing. 
All right, the first way is becoming a general partner, which is the opposite of a limited partner from the passive income side. We're talking active, and this is where a general partner comes into play. So maybe you're re being a general partner in an apartment syndication where you go out and you find the apartment complex, you do the due diligence, you get the T12, the rent rolls, you analyze the deal, you underwrite it a million you know, ways differently so that you can make sure this thing checks out and that there's money in it in the deal, right? You go get the funding, you go create the 506C, you go do all of it. That is the act of work, making sure the property manager is there and that you guys are in constant communication, that your investors are getting paid out. That's all the work of a general partner. Now, they get paid out with different fees when they put the syndication together. And if they're a good general partner, right, because they're active, they're, they're making sure this machine, this apartment complex is running and producing money for the limited partners. And so the general partners typically get paid after the limited partners. So they wanna make sure the limited partners get their returns, hopefully sooner rather than later, and then they'll get paid. And so they do have a bigger chunk to the pie overall, but they're doing more work, okay? Usually we see a 25% general partner to 75% limited partner. And so maybe 80, 20, I've seen 60, 40s. Again, it depends on deal. So you have to do your due diligence and, and all of that. But as a general partner, you are actively participating. I know people who do this all the time and what they're doing is they're stacking their wealth over time. So it's really great, but it is active. The second way being an active investor is you can go buy single family homes. You can go ahead and buy multifamily, you know, two to four units, because anything five units and above is considered commercial. Um, and within the commercial sphere, there's different asset classes. We'll talk about that here in a minute, but you can buy single family homes, rent them out, you know, make a little bit of cash flow here and there. Here's what I will tell you, you can create financial freedom that way it's just going to take you a lot longer. So if you're one of those people, you're like, you know what? I want to. I'm going to work my career for 20 years. I'm going to buy a house, a single family home every year that cash flows $250. That's great. And in 20 years, most of them will be paid off. Especially if you did a 15 year mortgage and you could get rents that cover that and cash flow, you'd be killing it. However, it is 20 years down the line. I've had people that I've coached and worked with who've created financial freedom through real estate in less than two years. Two years and 20 years is a 10x difference. How many of you would like to get free in two years, right? I don't care if you have no money to invest or if you're looking to kind of sell your small business and focus on real estate full time, whatever that is, you can do it. All right, I've seen it done. There's stories all over the internet you can check out and see how people have accelerated financial freedom using real estate, even when they started with no money. Next is a short-term rental. Short-term rentals, Airbnbs are blowing up everywhere. I think I just heard a stat in 2022. It was, and I don't have it in front of me, but it was something crazy like 60% of new Airbnbs came online in this last year. It's just wild. I know I have a short-term rental in the mountains, uh, two, uh, two hours away from our house. It is something that we absolutely enjoy because we get to do, uh, we get to go up there and do what we want and enjoy the house. And then we also, at the same time, rent it out. We Airbnb, so we make money off of it. All right, now that's, here's what I will tell you, a disclaimer. If you're in a city that is growing and people are constantly coming to visit and you're towards the center of the city, you're gonna probably do a lot better if you have, and I'm not giving you financial advice, I'm just sharing information, so I wanna make that clear, but you're probably gonna make a lot more money than at a destination like the mountains, right? Because there is seasons, like our rental, where in this like fall season, we don't get that much renters. And then in the spring season, when it's in between snowboard season and the summer and mountain biking, you, you, you don't make as much. But then during the summers and the winters, you got, you're blowing past what you expect, right? So short-term rentals are a great way to do that. And there's also a thing called short-term rental arbitrage. Now, what is that? 
That is when you don't go and buy the property and Airbnb it out. You find someone who owns a property who's willing to rent it to you. So let's just say the rental's $2,000 a month. You say, hey, I will give you $2,200 a month if I can rent your place for this next year and you will allow me to do Airbnb. Now, why would someone that owns a property not do it themselves? <clears throat> they don't wanna deal with gas and tenants and all that. But why would they rent it to someone else? Not only are they gonna get $200 extra, but one of the selling points is every week or after every guest, we're gonna have that place clean professionally. So it's constantly looking brand new. Plus there's insurance on that. And so there's so many benefits as an owner to constantly get their monthly cash flow of $200, $2,200. And for the person who's doing the Airbnb arbitrage, they can say, if the numbers check out, you gotta do your due diligence. There's sites like, uh, what's it, Nat Nash or, something like that and then air dna which we use and by the way if you use air dna their total numbers i usually take about 16 percent off because that includes cleaning fees so anyway i'm going into the weeds and details here you don't need to know this right now but i would just want to give you the the options that you can have but the person who is airbnb arbitrage at they might be able to go get 3500 dollars a month every single month Right, coming in, which means 3,500 minus 22 is $1,300 a month cash flow. And really, all they're doing, if they're not sourcing it out to a VA, they are just making sure the cleaners come, that any questions are asked on their phone, and it can be virtual. If you did that in 10 different locations, you're looking at $13,000 a month. And most people, even me, who have a, who has a wife, um, two kids. We could live off of $13,000 a month passively. Come on, can you, right? I think you could too. So Airbnb and Airbnb arbitrage through short-term rentals is a great way to do that. There's also midterm rentals, which I did an interview with someone, called, uh, a girl named Sarah Weaver. Go ahead and check it out in one of our previous videos where she makes up to $14,000 a month with midterm rentals, like traveling nurses who stay for three months. So that is another way to do that, but you are actively investing. However, you are creating financial freedom. How cool is that? And lastly, there's one of my favorites called creative financing. That's where there's someone who's going into foreclosure or pre-foreclosure, or maybe they bought a property there and the market dropped and they're upside down, or even they got it, they bought a house because they moved there and their job transferred them. And now they don't want to rent it out and deal with renters and all that. They just want to get out of it. You could through creative financing, take it over their mortgage payment and rent it out to someone else. And if there's a lot of margin in there, you can pull out all the equity. There's so many different ways, but creative financing is one of my favorite ways that I'm diving into actually, as I put a team of people together, to go through and create creative offers to homeowners and multifamily owners and even self storage units and all that good stuff, all the different asset classes out there. You can do all of that as an active investor. I went into a lot of detail, but just real quick, let's recap. You could be a passive investor. You could be in other people's deals. You could do hard money. You could be a silent partner. You could do all of that. Then there's the active investing that you can do where you could be a general partner or even do short-term rentals, creative financing, single family, multifamily homes. There's so many different options. There's more things. You could do tax liens and notes and all of that, but I didn't want to go into all that detail. I want to give you a big chunk on the passive side and the big chunk on the active side. So it doesn't really matter which path you choose. I would just say, pick a path, become a master at it, get really good at it, or know what you wanna do and how to mitigate the risk on that path and go put your money in. See, I was having a conversation with someone the other day and I'm like, yeah, someone could inherit it properties from their parents or their grandparents that they've just held on for years and they become millionaires because of that and financially free because of that. But some people don't know what it really feels like to put five, six figures up and wire that money in the deals or to a bank as a down payment for their investment property on their path to creating financial freedom. 
Again, real estate has produced the most multimillionaires in the history of our economy. Check it out. If you're not in it, you may want to step into it. If you're confused or you need help, you want to reach out. If you want to put your money to work as a passive investor, let me know. I have a ton of opportunities that I can be able to introduce you to. If you want to be an active investor, there's so many different ways. We're putting a training, a mastermind together for that. So if you're interested, please send an email to support at masterlifebydesign.com and we will get in contact with you. Just let us know your name, your email, and your phone number. All right, guys, if you found value in this video, first, hit that thumbs up button. Let us know that you enjoyed it. Secondly, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so that you can be notified when we have new videos coming out that are gonna help you on your path towards financial freedom so that you can go out and make an impact. You can go enjoy yourself and, and live your dreams or help the people that you wanna help. I'll share this with you really quickly as I wrap up. I just got back from seven, six days in Hawaii. We went to Maui with the family. We brought our nanny. My wife and I were able to go on dates and catch the sunsets together. And we didn't have to worry about how much money we were spending. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because you deserve to have those experiences too. Life is about the experiences you create and you, and you have, not the material stuff. None of the material stuff matters. It's how can you go out and have magical experiences and also make an impact on other people's lives. And to do that, you want to be able to give your time and your resources. That's why creating financial freedom is the first step. It is not the last step. And most people who go to retire, their whole focus is about creating financial freedom. So it's their last step. And that's actually our first step here at Master Life by Design. So hit that subscribe button, throw a comment in below. If you liked this video, let me know what you thought. Other than that, thanks for tuning in. My name is Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.